Hi, everybody. Welcome to the November 16, 2022 um, meeting of Bruce Township Board of Trustees. Um, can we get a roll call, please? Ms. Craven? Yes, here. DeGiorgio? Here. Kraft? Here. Trembley? Here. Hillbrook? Here. All members are present. And how about the Pledge of Allegiance, please? <coughs> I'd like to welcome everybody. Congratulations to Megan for her, um, I guess, president select for the village of Romeo. Um, <coughs> So at this time, has everybody had a chance to take a look at the, um, over the consent agenda? Does anybody have any um, additions or deletions that they wanted to make it? Yeah, I do. Uh, 6A, uh, we're gonna have to put that off. We'll take that off the agenda. Not ready for that. That's orange cloud internet. Okay. Um. I'm going to move item 7, uh, F, the ordinance code book, to uh, unfinished business, correct? Is that what we decided? So we'll put that in. We can do that as a six, six a 6A. Uh, or did you mean ordinance 186? Oh, one, They've both been discussed. Oh, before. no, 186. Yeah, they're both, we can leave the code book down there, but we'll move um, 7E to um, unfinished business. Yeah, we need to add the special land use. Yeah, and so I was going to um, add, yeah, the, the Kipper SLU to item 7R. Um, and there's nobody here for it. We're just going to keep it at. Or should they go under hearings and reviews? Um, our previous SLUs have been under new business. Okay. I, I remember. So. You want to put it before so, closed session, though? Yeah, before closed mm -hmm. session. Okay, set. So, do we want to move the cleaning contract up too, or no? No, because we have to pass that along. Close session about that. Okay. So this will be uh, the new P. Um, it, additionally, I'd like to bell to if it's okay with the board to move a few items at the beginning of the um of the new business. One of them would be. Um, the sewer proposal from the village of Romeo. We have representatives from the village of Romeo for any questions that we might have. And also um, the Romeo Schools repeater tower. We have uh, Dr. Robinson here from the Romeo School Systems to speak on that. So um, if nobody's got any other additions or deletions, didn't we say we we're going to take one more thing off? I thought. Well, you said the introductions, but, but I, they're here. I guess they're going to be here now. So. All of them? That's what I heard. That the, all the people are going to be here to be introduced. Uh, the two young ladies are. Okay. Right. Those are the new hires, though. Right. I don't think yeah. it's going to be. Sean is got class. Isn't Sean it? is class till seven thirty, and said he'd be here. He, he wouldn't be here in the area till eight thirty. So. We've already met him. Though, but anyway, it's so rehires. So. Right. So the new hires are basically it's listed under seven A, and said that we don't have to have it as seven A and B then, right? For the introductions are going to be. Oh, but we have to vote on the rehire and then the introduction. So it's two separate. We can take out the fire department new new hires. And, okay. Fine. Okay. Any, anybody else? No? Uh, quick question on the consent agenda. There's no loans required from the general fund for water or sewer this month. No. Not this <laughs> one. <laughs> Very <Wow>. good. <laughs> Those guys did a good job. Okay. Okay, if there's no other deletions or additions, I'll make a motion to go ahead and approve the consent agenda as amended. Second. Second by um, Crafty. Any other discussion? If not, may we get a roll call, please? Philbrook. Yes. Crafty. Yes. DiGiorgio. Yes. Kraft. Yes. 
Tremblay. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, at this time we have the uh, um, comments from the floor. Um, we would wish that you would go to the podium and speak, state your name, keep your comment session to a limited three minutes if possible. Good. Justin Parker, I'm with the uh, Romeo Masonic. Uh, we just wanted to invite everyone out again for the free uh, Thanksgiving meal we're doing on Thanksgiving again. We're doing sit-down dinner from 12 to 3, noon to 3, and then we also offer deliveries. If anyone needs deliveries of meals on Thanksgiving, you reach out to James at Wendy's at 586-785-7590. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Does anybody else want to come up for public comment at all? Anne Marie? No? Okay. Huh. Okay. At this time, then we'll close the session for public comment. Um, since we don't have any hearings and reviews, we'll move right on to unfinished business. Item um, 6B the cell phone, cell phones for the board members. Yeah. So, um, spent some time this past week uh, talking to a rep from Verizon, Gabel Nicolas, who is in charge of uh, government uh, contracts uh, for Verizon. So, what you have in front of you is um, what they came up with as, a, as far as a price. It's the bottom line price that you'll get. It comes to, well, down here it says $359.97, but realistically it's $319 because for some reason their computers don't do this, but that plan cost for the cell phones where it's $60, that is actually $50. So it brings it down to uh, $319. Um, it is a law that Verizon has to provide governments with free phone, government entities with free phone. All they have to pay for is the service. Uh, iPads, they will charge for an iPad. Um, so they, they're, they give $100 off per iPad. In this case, we're, we need three of them. They would give um, the unit price of $359.99. They would, that would be due on the day we tell them we want to sign up the thousand one thousand seven seventy nine dollars and ninety seven cents but the phones are free and it comes out to I don't know like about thirty nine dollars a phone okay. now the difference between this and consumers consumer they charge you for a phone they, they they do not give phones out free do they give you a two for one yes they do but realistically you're still paying half price for that other phone they're giving you for free and you're getting the one for free. Um, but with government, they do not um, give, they do not charge you for phones. Obviously, we have six members of the board, and we're only going to get three iPads. That's because we're going to use our current yeah, laptops. Yeah, we have our laptops, have. right? And, uh, and then the iPads would go to um, uh, Lisa, Mike, and the Chief. Okay. Cell phones. Uh, be myself, you and myself, Susan, Lisa, and you and Fire yeah. Chief and the Chief. Yes, um, Mike and Lisa. Yeah, you don't want one. Thoughts on no. no. Okay. Okay. I so the reason for this, I think we explained it last time, is that phones can be FOIAed, and I don't want my phone FOIAed. Um, and with the iPads, we want to get away from all this paper. When you put it all together, this like is like probably two reams of paper that they print out every month so we want to get away from that and start going as digitally as possible because the cost of papers doubled inks gone up you know everything's gone up so that's it I make a motion that we accept um, this proposal from a Verizon as presented second as second modified decision. as modified right as mod as modified with the 319 yeah as modified well with the with the phones too, the 50 versus 60. That's the bot. That's the price at the bottom. Three fifty. Where you see three fifty nine ninety seven. Yeah, but you said it's three nineteen, right? Three nineteen, right? After they. <coughs> so it's as modified. Correct that plan cost. Is there any other discussion? 
And a motion by Frank, second by Susan. We have no other discussion. Can we get a roll call, please? De Giorgio? Yes. Kraft? Yes. Trembley? Yes. Crafty? Yes. Philbrook? Yes. Motion carries. Thanks, uh, Frank and Susan, too, for doing the work. You did the initial work on it. So. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Yep. Got them all. Okay, moving on to item um, seven. This is added item ordinance 186, moved to unfinished business, the ordinance code book. Um, or no, I'm sorry, ordinance 186. And uh, well, here's the kibble motion. Susan, did you put the 186 on there? Yeah. Okay. Did you want to is there any paperwork it? on that? This. Is that this? Yeah. I just put this together. So we've been, we have been working on this ordinance and yeah. kind of sit yeah. in a group and five of us and have gone over the ordinance. You have one more? What? You have one more, Brian? That's Frank fine. You got to know. Um, and we, we think that there are problems with the ordinance that have to be cleared up. Some um, verbiage, uh, some definitions. And this schedule right that uh, Dan put together kind of um, lists some of the stuff, for example, maintenance fees. Some of this is confusing when you see it now on the bill. Um, it was ready to serve. We'd like to suggest that it be maintenance fees. It's clear. Sewage, and then the bottom one, sewage disposal fees. We'd like it to uh, say wastewater disposal service fee. These are just some of the suggestions. So we're hoping to put them all together, send them to Bob, have him put something together. Uh, to come that would come back to us for approval because this he right from the start he didn't write this ordinance uh, Debbie and Paul did and he found problems with it so yes send it back to him for consideration I mean I mean at the same time I think we should look at our um I mean since we're going to be sending something back on our fee schedule our our fee schedule for our usages is not very good either. I mean, we've got the consideration. I mean, and I think that we can all, some of the businesses are pe being charged quite a bit of money for sewage disposal. And basically, they've got one toilet in there and they're not really, you know, they're paying almost the same or they're paying a lot more than places that have got full kitchens and more than one toilet. So we need to work. And it was written by previous administrations. I think we need to dial in a little bit better. Well, and so if anybody has suggestions, I mean, we really have sat around the room Mm -hmm. We had a round table, Bob, yeah. Yep. Dana, Amy, Frank, and myself, and we came up with some of these ideas. But if you have suggestions, give them to us, and we will be happy to share those. And this is just a working document yeah. at this mm -hmm. point. So. Bob, Dana, and uh, Amy <coughs> spent a lot of time with this, and they did a great job. They found a lot of errors, um, and they found, you know, the fact that there's some places weren't being charged appropriately. Half of them. They were getting half charged half of the fee that they should have been charged. So they made a lot of corrections, and as you can see, there's no loan that <laughs> yeah. we've Frank, had to borrow this month. Was that for both um, uh, residential and for businesses, yes. commercial? Yeah. Okay. They got involved with both of them. Okay. So commercial and um, uh, sewer and water. Okay. The most of the corrections on the residential side were just basically because they weren't being charged a water meter fee. Right. But on uh, sewer, it was mostly on the commercial side is what it was. Overcharged or undercharged? Yeah, undercharged. Undercharged. So what you guys did is review the bills and make sure that they were being billed correctly according to the ordinance. And we're still Correct. reviewing. And you're still reviewing. Still reviewing, yeah. And, and you found some areas where you think the language could be cleaned up. Yes. Now, Bob was going to take a look at it for just language type issues yeah <clears throat> making sure that the language is well, we'll get legal all our suggestions together first yeah. okay so this yeah. is a discussion only we're not going to be taking a vote other than the right. authorized Siebert right. to go exactly. do this right because we were going to do it and then we thought no we should bring it to you first uh, yeah. rather than just go right to him see like the service fee for a lot of the residents was very confusing they come in to pay their bill and they're saying why am I being charged ready to serve I'm already being served I'm connected so we had to explain to them that it's a fixed that's cost just for everybody. The name of it, it should. So we that's what we decided that it should be maintenance fee instead of ready to serve fee. 
And the same thing for the sewage disposal fee. They're wondering why, what's a wastewater disposal fee? I mean, we know that's wastewater because we know we refer to the plant in Romeo as a wastewater treatment plant. But these residents, wastewater, they don't know what that means. It's just okay. treatment. Putting it in a little bit more of a layman's terms yeah. for people right. to understand. Some communities, it's kind of like basically what we're charged from Great Lakes Water. We have one service fee where it's all grouped into one fee. It just basically says service fee, and then you can break it down accordingly. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know. What also, what we need to talk about is the water bill. You know, when they pay their water bill online, they're, the most they can pay is $400. And they get charged $3.95 to pay that bill online with their credit card. Now, they can do an ACH check with us for $2.50, but a lot of people like using their cards because they collect points on their rewards points. So some there's been some cases where people are now having to pay that bill twice, which is now turned into a eight percent charge or uh, eight dollars. Yeah, seven dollars or seven point five percent. And for a bill of fourteen hundred dollars or four hundred dollars, you're talking about thirteen dollars and fifty cents for one bill. So I reached out to one of the residents that's a spokesman for the community over there, and I asked them what they thought about going to a monthly bill. Would it help them financially to maybe budget their money a little better? He thought that's a great idea, and he's going to ask around and get some feedback from the residents on what they think about it. Instead of going a three-month period, just bill them every month, maybe they can Why is there a $400 limit? Well, because if you... Um, if you go over that, there's a, there, there's a, more, it's a three point, I'm sorry, it's a three dollars and 95 cent charge for up to four hundred dollars. If you go over that, then you, they, they charge three point two five for the credit card company. That's what they charge. So you can't have it both ways. You got to have it one or the other. Anything over four hundred, three point two five percent charge that the company's, uh, the credit card's going to charge. Under 400, it's three dollars and ninety-five cents. Okay. So, and also, you know, there are some people that they make they, they make it a habit of making a hundred-dollar payment like every two weeks or once a month, even though they didn't get their bill. They're making that payment. So that's something else that we found that, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's their way of making a payment and you know just budgeting their money. They'll mail a check to us, or they put a check in the Dropbox. I think I think a lot of the communities have gone monthly. I mean, our uh, commercial accounts are all monthly. I don't see there's. I think it's a great idea. You know, soften the blow a little yeah. bit. Yeah. You know? So he's going to get back. He's going to take a survey of the community out there and get back with me and let us know what we think, what they think. Okay. Sounds I do good. have one residential, or I'm sorry, one commercial uh, customer I spoke with regarding their sewer bill which um, had more, almost doubled. And so I need to bring that to you guys' attention to take a look at it, because they're a very- A residential customer? Commercial customer. I, did you mention it to me? Yeah, I think yeah, I, I did. I, I, I talked about it. Okay, yeah. so you guys have, okay. So Thanks. that may be a perfect example of what we were talking about. Not only do we need to change the wording on our fee schedule, we need to try to get our fee schedule more appropriately in alignment with what the actual uses are. Right. Is that something you want to give to the sewer and water committee, subcommittee? I think that can be handled in-house, Mike. I mean. Well, that's something else we need to talk about the sewer. Yeah. What do we want them doing? Because they want, I don't know, you want to talk about that now? Or wait until we vote on this? Yeah, this. Because one of the things they asked for was um, a list of the residents or the commercial businesses and the amount they pay. So I, I'm kind of apprehensive to give this out because it tells the name and. and we the have one committee address. member here. If you want to. Well, I just want I just want to get a feel for what you all want. Uh, uh, this I gave you the example. Did, did they give say. a reason as to why they needed that? N no, and I, I'm not sure they do. We can share that with everybody, Mike. So that that shows you what what uh, it lists. It, uh, and some of them, you know, have a mine a negative balance because for various reasons, but. Um, it gives a lot of information, but I'm not sure we, we really need it. it is a public document, so somebody could toy is. But I'm not sure they really need it, and I'm uh, not sure everyone would be comfortable with sharing this information. 
So I don't know, maybe Mike, you want to talk to them. Or so. Yeah, there's any that we got. So what, it's a totally different subject um, than our ordinance 186 right now. So. Um, well, but, you know, they're going to come across some issues that, like, we've come across where people are paying $100 a week or a month, and they're going to start questioning, well, how come this person paid $100 and this person's paying $800? You know, I mean, these are things that we're finding through our investigation, and we'd like to clear all this up and identify all those issues before somebody else starts digging in and then asking us a million questions that's going to double or triple our work. You know, it's not the we're hiding anything we just want to get all these issues straightened out because these issues have been there since we took office and we've been working through them trying to correct them trying to fix them and it's been a long process but we we're getting there and we still got a little bit more to do i think once you know we send this ordinance over to um our attorneys you know i think maybe we should be all right Does that make sense, Mike, at all? You, you kind of get... I, I think there's a lot of moving parts. <laughs> but, I mean, I think what the, what the office has discovered probably needs to get fixed. But I'm just thinking that Ordinance 186 may get revisited in the future. We don't know when. But um, if this is stuff that will Im have immediate positive impact, then I'm, I'm all for the let Bob Siebert do it and, and take the input that the, that the internal group came up with to help improve the ordinance as it is today. So we're not actually voting on that either, then I think it's just a matter of getting a word and we will vote on it when we do well, get Well, we're going to vote to have the attorney to work on it, right? Based on the input from the internal study. I don't even know if we need to put a vote. I'd like do to we? move to Maybe send ordinance 186 to the attorneys to make clarifications, corrections, and add definitions. She's got the motion all ready to go. Second. <laughs> Second by Frank. There's no other discussion. We'll um, do a, a roll call, but yeah, we'll have to when we get the amendment. We'll have to vote on it then, Mike. Right. right. So, okay. Grant. Yes. The Giorgio. Yeah, sorry. Yes. yes. <laughs> I <just> said Frank. <laughs> Trembley. Yes. Crappy. Yes. Philbrook. Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Moving on to. Um, Fire people are all here, I think. Yep, we're gonna get that next. So item seven uh seven eight. Seven eight, fire department new hires. Well it's this is for the okay. Introductions first. Um you wanna do introductions? Yeah, that's what he's gonna do, I think. Oh yeah, it's okay. Chief, I guess it's kind of confusing a little, a little bit right. for me, but it's. I guess we're going to do the introductions of the new hires first, and then the new hire would be actually Sean. I guess well, I can just make a motion to approve the rehire of Sean Rapsius to the Bruce Romeo Fire Department. So that's item seven A, and then the next one. Oh, will that's be, what you want at seven A. Yeah. Okay. So I'll second that motion. Does anybody have any um, discussion? You, anyone got a brief bio? Uh, Sean. Uh, yeah. Normally, don't you give a brief bio? Yeah, I was going to go ahead and do that. Sean was hired uh, June of 2021, Romeo High School graduate. <clears throat> Started with Bruce Township Fire. He put in just about a year with us as paid on call. Um, he had an opportunity. Uh, we put him through the fire academy, so he was an EMT and a firefighter. Uh, he had the opportunity um, to go to another department and, and test his skills as a, a full-time employee. Um, He's in the paramedic program, and he, and he found that just a little bit overwhelming, so he's going to focus his, his, um, his career on his studies right now to be, get his paramedic license. So um, the department he was with, he, he um, left that department, and he wanted to come back here and operate his paid on call while he does his medic program. So we'd like to welcome Sean Repshaw's back. Awesome. We you get a motion, motion on the tape floor. I second. <laughs> Take a roll call and get a chance. Kraft? Yes. Philbrook? Yes. The Giorgio? Yes. Trembley? Yes. Crappy? Yes. 
Motion carries. Welcome back, Sean. Welcome back, Sean. Yes. Which so one's Sean? Raise your hand. Sean's at school. Oh, he's not here. Okay. Sean has school till seven thirty on oh, Wednesday good. evenings. He said he don't get back to the area till eight fifteen, eight thirty. So he he kind of just said, I, I don't think I'll be able to make it this All evening. Right. So. Okay. But you were introduced to him yep. last yep. year. So. Yep. Big one of the other big kids. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we'll move on to um, new hires seven B. Thanks for the opportunity again, board. It feels like deja vu. We did this uh, last month with uh, Tiffany and Maya, and here we are uh, this month doing it again. Um, I'd also personally like to congratulate Megan on her uh, win for her village president. Look forward to working with you, Megan, in the future. Okay. So at this time, I'd like to bring up the two new hires, which would be Jessica and Autumn. So you two young ladies want to come up here, stand by me. We'll put you guys front and center here. <coughs> we'll introduce you to the board. Board, this is Jessica Kitchen. Hi, Jessica. And this is Autumn Michaels. Hi, Autumn. Welcome. So we're going to kind of do that same format. Um, they're going to step up to the mic and... and Tell a little bit about themselves to everybody. So, Autumn, do you want to go first and, and kind of tell us a little bit about yourself and what's going on with you? Hi, everybody. So, as we all heard, my name is Autumn. I My story starts when I was adopted into a big family, a family of seven to be exact, and I'm the youngest. <laughs> yeah, family gatherings are great. So I graduated from Romeo High School. I've taken the EMT class with Jess and Tiff and Maya. Tiff and, yeah, Tiff and Maya, thank you. And uh, while I was working, uh, while I was in high school, I was working as manager at Jets Pizza. And when I graduated high school, passed my EMT test, and I've been working here since November 1st as a paid on-call EMT. I'm going to Fire Academy in January, I'm pretty sure. And currently, I am at Oakland University majoring in nursing. And I love playing music and skiing and reading. In the future, I don't know exactly where I'll be. But right now, the plan is to either become a nurse practitioner or a flight nurse or flight paramedic. Thank you. Congratulations. Nice. So I'm Jessica Kitchen. Um, I graduated from Romeo High School in June, so I'm class of 2022. Um, I attend Oakland University. I am pre-med and majoring in either biology or biomedical sciences. I'm also minoring in Spanish. Um, I currently work at Varel and Orchards. I'm a cashier there. And I'm just really excited to work for the township and get to help the community. Awesome. Fantastic. Welcome. This is a good time to give Romeo High School a plug because <laughs> our last four or five uh, new hires are fresh out of high school and uh, got their EMT license. You know, very dedicated to the program and, and committing to the EMT. And um, all four of these did a lot of their ride along time with us, so they're very familiar with our operations and our personnel. So keep sending your graduates north. <laughs> so I'd like to have the board. Meet uh, Autumn Michaels and Jessica Kitchen. Congratulations. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Sure. This is the best part of the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Congratulations. Any close seconds? And, uh, fire department can just hang on for one more um, agenda item. That would be great. Chief, you want to go ahead and talk about item? Uh, right. Which one? Seven C Fire uh, Ford Motor Company. Ford Motor Company. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so if you're, you may be aware, you may not be aware, but. Um, the Michigan Proving Grounds and Ford Motor Company donated a fire truck to our fire department. 
Um, well, right now, I'd like to have Mr. John Grant step forward and stand up here with me, please. I'll introduce you to the board. He's the facilities and administration administrative manager or supervisor at the Michigan Improving Grounds. Um, oh, Mr. Yeah, John that's Grant. What he is. Yeah, John. Yeah. That's right. Right. <laughs> I apologize. You look familiar, and I couldn't play the picture where I seen you. But yeah, nice to see you again. So, Mr. Mr. Grant and I have have talked over the years. Um, we deal with our, a lot of our fire inspections at the Proving Grounds, the water supply and uh, the water storage at the Proving Grounds. We've had meetings on moving forward with um, lithium-ion batteries and, and training on the batteries. We recently had some training with the Proving Grounds and the Four-Wheel Drive Association. We're, we're, trying to, we're trying to work a little more at the Proving Grounds and they're trying to work a little more with us on you know, perfecting our skills and seeing what's out there and what's coming up in the future. Well, over the years, um, every time we used to go do those um, standby calls, so every time they have high-speed racing or trying to flip cars or all types of different maneuvers at the proving grounds, we have to bring an ambulance out there um, for standby for the event of something happened. So um, we've always had, or I and a lot of our fire department members have, a, <coughs> have always had eyes on their little mini pumper. They have a fire truck out there that they would provide for us in an event of emergency, right? So. Um, over the years, John and I have talked. Uh, a couple years ago, I, I, I tried to get it from him, and at that time, it wasn't available. <clears throat> so earlier this year, um, I think I, I emailed John and, and asked, and, and he said it looks like it may be a possibility because I heard they were probably going to be getting rid of it. They were either going to destroy it or John will talk a little further on what they were, their plans were with it. But um, <clears throat> we ended up uh, getting the donation from the Michigan Proving Grounds and, and Mr. John Grant. So this is kind of what the proposal looked like. It was an eight and a half by 11. John, I'll let you talk a little bit more about the process and, and how we went about it. But this is the truck right here. It's a 1995 Ford uh, mini pumper. So. so yeah, so thank you. Uh, again, John Grant from the Proving Grounds. Uh, just thank you for having me. Um, this is really one of those uh, situations where um, it just kind of fell together. Um, like like uh, the chief said, um, we, were, we were looking to uh, get rid of the vehicle from the proving ground because it hadn't been in service for quite some time. Obviously, you can tell it's a 95 truck. So it hadn't been in service in a while, but it had been kept up and obviously was still in working order. So we had uh, approached our counterparts in Dearborn where they could possibly use the truck, and that kind of fell through. And at the same time, the chief and I, as he was saying, um, we have been doing some training exercises together and, and, and strengthening our relationship. And then he reminded me about the pickup truck and, uh, and we were able to um, get this uh, um, put through. We had to put a proposal to our management and uh, this was approved all the way up to, uh, at the vice president level of the company. Um, so as a donation to the proving, uh, to, from the proving ground to the, to the township. So, I'm just really glad that this has happened. Um, and in, in my mind, this is a win-win scenario because as the chief said, this will not only um, help the citizens of the township, but it will help the proving ground because it will be out there to uh, do recovery and uh, support for any of the um, more interesting testing that we do on the proving <laughs> ground. So. Thank, you. So, right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. John. I'm a, Thank you. We got a little something for you. Um, just a little certificate of appreciation, John, for Ford and the Michigan Proving Ground oh. for your donation. Oh, thank you very uh, much. For the vehicle, so. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, a stand in this. Yeah, no problem. I can put two and two together. You look good, Mike. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you all. Thanks for having me. Thank you, John. Okay. All right. Fire Department, you guys can stay if you guys want to. It's up to you. <laughs> but don't trample each other on the way out the door. You know, <laughs> trying to get out of here in a hurry. Yeah. Thank Bye. you, guys. Bye. See you guys. Thank you. Be safe. Sergeant, how are you? Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Hi. So you got the big coffee going over there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay.
All right, let's move on to um, um, item 7D under uh, new business would be text my gov. Did oh. we want to move some of the other stuff up, Mike? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, we needed to, yeah, we did move it up the, the to. Recruit um, Peter Tower and yeah. the sewer. Peter. The okay. Township Romeo Tower, Romeo Schools Repeater, because Mr. Robinson's so, here. Yeah, let's let's uh, take on um, item 7L right now, the Township uh, Romeo Schools Repeater Tower. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Mr. Todd Robinson on behalf of the Romeo School System. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, thank you. Um, I believe we submitted a letter. There's there's actually been some preliminary conversations uh, with, I think, Mr. DiGiorgio and Supervisor Philbrook, uh, Mark Nelson, our tech director, a couple representatives from IDS, our tech consultant. Um, we've We've been pursuing a more reliable emergency communication network in the district really since um, 2019. And so um, the geography of our district is a blessing in many ways, especially on the north end here in the township. Um, but it's also a bit of a curse when we try to have reliable communication. So um, this, this proposal really um, kind of crosses across two things. It is communication within our buildings but it also is connected to our transportation fleet. So um, we have communication with our buildings. We do have a, a minimal repeater system in the district, but we've been pursuing um, trying to get up high enough and try and get coverage so that we can bring in a higher level of radio um, for about 31 members of our leadership team. And then of course our bus fleet would have more of a fixed radio uh, in there. And so it took us a while. We've gone through a couple of contractors and uh, the pandemic kind of put this on ice for a while, but we feel we're working with the right contractor now and we feel like we have a good solution. Uh, and um, the tower and Bruce here is, is really a quite optimum um, location. Um, there was a period of time with our previous operations director where we were actually talking about the proving ground and um, a couple other towers that we pursued, whether that be the state police or the county roads division, where um, that just isn't accessible because of the nature of their work. So um, we're just looking to partner on this, and I think you know the 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 route forward with the support of the board would really to be to get into some kind of cooperative agreement um, that we can work on putting together. Um, our tech consultant has done this in a few other communities. Uh, and the contractor we're working with has actually done it, you know, across not just the state, but some other locations in the Midwest. Um, so the equipment, the cabling, the installation, all of that would be on the district. Uh, and then, you know, we would, we would service it as needed in that. Um, I don't know the technicalities of some of this, but I'm just telling you, we, we got to get, once we get that repeater antenna up there, uh, we have two on the south end of the district and we'll be installing them at, um, probably the rest of our buildings, we, we think we might be able to not have to do it. We've got to get something down at Washington Elementary and the high school. So um, this will complete a system for us to be able to communicate not dependent on cell service, um, not dependent on our network, and not dependent on landlines. Um, but we would have a series of communication channels in that, similar to, to uh, the emergency fire service in that, but we're at a band lower than them. We can't interfere with their <coughs> network, but they could actually, they could connect with us or monitor us as well. So um, it's just uh, an additional labor of security uh, and safety, proactive safety work. The day in and day out connections of it would really be more with our transportation fleet, but in the event of an emergency, we would be able to communicate. I could communicate with all of our principals at one time um, to update them or make the necessary moves that we need. Okay. Thanks, so, sir. Dr. Robinson, may I ask a question? Sure. So you, you have current communication channels that you use today, and those just aren't proving inadequate, I take it? Yeah. Our, or unreliable our cell or service is not reliable. And our, our radio bus system, there's parts of the district where the buses will go in and out of being able to communicate with dispatch. Um, this would allow us a network where they would be picked up by a different location. Um, and so there's times where a bus is late, we're not sure if a kid is on the bus. And although that might only be five, eight, or 10 minutes, that seems like a lifetime um, to the folks at the school and, and the parents that are waiting to be sure where their child is, so. 
Not only that, it's a, the most dangerous part of the probably the hilly terrain of those bus drivers that got to probably You're manipulate dirt during snow days. And, and on winter when it's slipping yeah. and icy. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So Frank and I have met with uh, Orange Cloud. They're the, going to be the, possibly the new internet providers of the tower anyways. And we did make sure that there was sufficient enough power. They were looking for a 30 amp uh, service out there. We also had to check to make sure the weight loads and the wind loads were going to be sufficient to handle the the eight foot whip and um, the feedback that we got back there would be no issues on either one of them. Right. So um, looks like that would be a strong, definite go for sure. So myself, I would like to just go ahead and make a motion to possibly have the township or the, the Romeo Schools attorney draw up some paperwork and make some kind of a, a mutual agreement between uh, Bruce Township and uh, the Romeo School Systems. And um, I mean, I, I think it's great that the township can actually provide a service to the school system and help uh, help out the schools for the safety and well-being of the the children of our community so we'll put a term limit on it it doesn't have to you know we can review it uh, you know every few years or something like that okay. until we're sure that the you know the agreement's right and it's working and then go from there okay so so you have somebody that would install it and service it yes it. okay yep that proposal's already been approved by the board that's okay. gone out and you know we're ready it's just if, if we can't work arrangements like this then we're going to have to go and put our own you right. know tower in and attach to our own equipment which in this case we wouldn't have to do that you know those funds would be able to de be dedicated elsewhere did you make a motion yeah i, put I a second motion. it were you able to capture that whole motion it's a little bit drawn out i guess Mr. Rabbit, do you want to read it back? How many towers do you have now? Or, we have uh, repeaters. We have one at Indian Hills. Indian Hills. Mm -hmm. yeah. That should be a problem. Yes, sir. Did you get that one, sir? I only think I've got most of it. Um, it's a motion by Phil Burke, supported by DiGiorgio, to allow Romeo Community Schools attorney to draw up agreement between Romeo Community Schools and Bruce Township to allow. Uh, to allow repeater, repeater. Allow the repeater on a repeater tower. on a tower. Hip Road Tower. Yeah, I guess it should be. Mr. Robinson, you said Hip Road Tower. You said you you have someone that has drawn these agreements up before, so this is not a brand new type of thing, right? No. So you, it all has who's obligated to do what and who's liable for what. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. It'll be. The, we'll have obviously our township attorney yeah. will take a look at it just but I'm sure that there should be well I'm sure if it's been done before it's probably yeah it's pretty it's kosher based template yep yeah so we have a motion and second if there's no other discussion may we get a roll call please Philbrook yes the Giorgio yes crappy yes craft yes Tremblay yes motion carries thank you perfect thank you, thank you very much thank you We do this right no one will be here <laughs> what was that Mike? i said if we do this right we'll someone will leave after every attempt to talk <laughs> <laughs> um yeah people away. all right so we moved did we move anything else the sewer, sewer proposal sewer. because uh oh yeah, that's right the village of romeo village of romeo is here can't forget about mr clark's back there i can see him okay. hiding a little bit is he here to talk about that subject i'm not sure yeah. um I'm here to listen. okay so we'll move, uh, we're going to talk on, uh, bring up item 7K, the sewer proposal from the Village of Romeo. So um, we do have members from the Village of Romeo, actually um, three of them that are here, including the Village Attorney, Mark Clark. If we had any questions regarding the proposal that we were um, given by, um, by the Village. So... Justin, I'm going to have some questions for you. I think you were part of the sewer committee, or were you part of the committee, or are both? Um, I was part of the committee. Yes. Would you be able to answer questions on behalf of the village, or is that something that you would prefer Megan would do, or Mr. Clark, or? Are, are you from the? 
Well. Tag team. <coughs> hey, everybody. Hi. So, uh, as you have the proposal in front of and you. You're, you're, who are you? Pardon me? State your name. Oh, please. Megan Posnanski. Right. I apologize. Village of Romeo, elect. president elect. <laughs> um, this proposal is from our sewer subcommittee. It is not an official proposal from the council itself. So I was not part of the subcommittee. Um, I do, know, do not know the exact details of it. I have seen the document you're looking at, but I just want you to know that this is not council approved. This is not it. This is basically you look at it and if you want to continue, you ask to continue in negotiations with us, we go forward. But yes, any questions you have at this time? Justin is here because he was on the subcommittee, so he could answer those more specifically than I could for you. So I guess my question is, is since it, it, it hasn't been approved by your board or hasn't even been looked at by some of the members of your board? If I'm we have seen it. We've seen the document that you have, but it, this has not been approved by the council. It was the idea of the subcommittee ca comes up with it, throws it your way to see if you even are interested before we continue to do more work. Gotcha. Okay. So throw them at us because you're thinking. So who, so your subcommittee came up with this? Is yes. Because I know there was some, a little bit of interaction, but this is the first we're seeing of it too. Okay. So. We got it um, a couple months ago. It wasn't, let's see, September, August or September? I can't recall off the top of my head. So, um, and I guess it may be more directed towards uh, Mr. Parker since he was on the committee, but I know we just, we've talked throughout the year with, um, you know, Christine and I think Mark Clark might have been president or maybe the engineer, um, your engineer from um, Hubbard, Roth and... That's correct. Yeah, Mike, right? Correct. And it was regards to the, we, we, we were being looked at because we had site plan approvals on certain buildings, I guess you would say. And with the certain buildings, we, we sell our, our user, our, our disposal is based on our, our use at 300 gallons a day. So let's just take, for instance, a machine shop that we have going in in our community, and it's a 20,000 square foot machine shop. Well, our current um, usage chart, we would charge one REU per 2,000 square feet. So a 20,000 square foot building would be 10 REUs at 300 gallons per REU, which is 3,000 gallons a day. The issue I was having before is that we were kind of cut off when we were only we, we were saying that we were exceeding our 510,000 gallons a day on our flow when technically what was going through the sewer treatment plant was considerably less, like 280s on a, on a good day or 300 on a good day. So even though we have a, a building that we have 3,000 gallons worth of flow basically on site plan, they've only got one toilet in the front and one toilet in the back and maybe a couple of hand sinks that, you know, it's, it's not something we can really, I guess, gauge our contracts on I know it was part of the wording in the previous contract but it's not something that we we don't want to make a huge investment again and then be held you know cut off at the pass when we haven't even reached our our committed capacities you know what I'm saying so maybe we could take a better look at that that wording and that verbiage on there is that making sense to you at all I understand what you're saying I just I'm not clear of the question well it says in the in the, in the new contract basically and you can look at it as two different ways if you read the contract. It says the township's capacity shall be determined based on the actual metered flows, which is the meter at the sewage treatment plant, or um, are plus the flows stated or determined by use in the site plan approved by site plans approved by the township from time to time. Meaning that our site plans are showing that we're gonna have a building that's gonna show that it's going to be capable of 3,000 gallons a day through our site plan approval through our, our fee schedule, which is going to be impossible to have 3,000 gallons of flow go through two toilets and a couple of hand sinks. We don't want that to be the reason that, you know, when we're on. So we pick up another 100,000 gallons a day that gives us 610,000 gallons a day that we're going to be contracted with the village of Romeo. We don't want you coming basically what we're trying to say is we don't when we hit 400,000 gallons a day but we got site plan approval for you know a couple 40,000 square foot buildings and 
maybe a 20,000, maybe an 80,000 on site plan, then we're going to show that we're going to exceed our allocated capacity, our allocated capacities. But technically, we, we need to be, I guess, held accountable for what's actually going through the treatment plant, through the metered area. You, you follow me on that? Now? Yeah, I, still, I understand. I'm still, I'm, what is there a question? <laughs> Maybe we need to have that part of the contract obviously worded a little bit because yeah, right so now guys, it sounds like if you guys decide to move forward and want to have negotiations, that would all be stuff that would be right. worked out then. Because again, currently, by the way that this is stated right here with our site plan approvals right now, we are in what we have for our usage chart. We are obviously exceeding our 510,000 gallons a day, and that, that was at one point this year that we were actually told that we weren't going to get another gallon, but it was based on, you know, finally we were told that we'll go by this, the volume of water that's going through the treatment plant through the meter. So we were able to sell some more, I guess, sewage capacity. So, you know, so that's all I'm asking on that part of it, just that wording. You know, maybe be reworded so we're not, that you guys don't, and I'm not trying to say it in the wrong way, but hold that to tell us that we can't sell any more sewer, that we're shut off kind of thing, you know. So and that's kind of what happened at, at one point in time, you know, and it was the end of last year, the beginning of this year. So, so like, it does sound like you would like to move forward. If we could get a motion made possibly to move forward, we will be working together. We'll uh, bring it back to our table, say that there does, there is movement on Bruce's side, the want to move forward. We will see where we, what council would like to do, whether we resurrect the subcommittee or however we do it and continue in these negotiations. Well, I mean, that was just one item, but I mean, we're not gonna be able to put a motion on the floor because again, we have the cost factor that we need to look at too. And the other question I was gonna have is, and I, maybe it's not any of my business, but how, do, how was the $1.2 million for 100,000 gallons determined that we would have to pay for infrastructure upgrades for the plan again after we just paid on our previous contract to get the additional capacities that we have right now to increase the capacities of the plant from 1.6 million to 2.2 million gallons a, a day. And now we're gonna, you know, we want another 100,000 gallons, we've got to pay another 1.2 million. Obviously we just had a, a, a fee increase, which we talked a little bit about. It tonight and you can hear some of the homeowners are having a hard time making payment. When we have to pay that kind of money, it's basically gonna, only going to be one way that we can t take care of it, and that would be to take it to the consumer and the consumers are the ones that are going to get it on the chin. And I guess my question is, is how, how did you guys determine the 1.2 million when your plant's capable of handling the extra capacity and you know, you don't really need to do any upgrades to pick up the 1.2 million. So. Right. And I, I hear your questions and that's where I'm saying, I'm not asking you to approve this document. What I'm saying is, say yes we would like to move steps forward and we can sit down and go over all this because just as i told you i would like to see that too i don't have an answer for you i apologize i was not part of the committee i don't have the documentation um, i did not sit down with our engineers so that's where i'm saying if you guys want to move forward because our board closed the subcommittee and since we hadn't heard back said i guess they're done so in order to take the next step of hey yes they are still interested, I need to be able to bring back. They said they would like to still negotiate and work with us. So that's where, that's where I'm at on my end. Some open lines of communication. Yeah, that's all. I am, I'm, this can all be, we can discuss this and I will learn along with you because <laughs> I wish I could, had those answers for you. Um, and then we can have a working document between, you know, as we work together on this and negotiate. Yeah. I, I appreciate you working as a good neighbor should, and I hope we can continue that relationship. But yeah, as Mike stated, uh, to me personally, this 1.2 million doesn't make sense because it says this payment is for the part of the cost of the improvements to the facility for which the village has already done. Well, the village and Bruce. And Bruce, we right. Paid but 3.6 million. In my mind, I'm thinking, would you buy a car from somebody who's going to charge you all the oil changes and the tune ups that you just put on it? No, you know, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, these are things that we need to talk about and, yeah. and, and discuss. Yeah, and that we can talk, absolutely. Right. Let's look at it and see, you know, what would work best, what will not only protect your residents, protect my residents, my asset, or our assets, rather, um, and see what we can do. It's based basically for the people in our community. I mean, we have a commodity that they need, and 
you know, they, they've got to be able to afford to pay for it. And I mean, that's all we're trying to do is just. Right. And know, I am more than willing as long as we have what it takes right. and it doesn't take any more from my residents to, you know, subsidize in any way. Mm -hmm. So that's that fair. just to lay it all out on the table. That's sure. where, you know, yep. and I and I would expect the same exact from you. Absolutely. Right. So the, the one the, the figure, the one point two million for 100,000 gallons, was that determined by the subcommittee then or was it determined by maybe the subcommittee came up with that document? Okay. So maybe it would be best if we could again, you know, I mean, I'm sorry that we didn't I mean, when we looked at the numbers, it was just kind of shocking in a way. You know, we had our fee increases that we were going to do, and it was just kind of hard for us to, to really deal with it with the election coming and everything. Right. So now nope. the election's over. Understood. So but if you would like to move forward, please let us know, whatever way that is, whether yep. it's a motion or just a letter of, you know, to the uh, village, and let's continue to move forward. I'll take it to council, possibly... Um, depending on how the next few days goes. Maybe the current president brings it to council on uh, Monday, and that we'll see. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All good, Thanks. Justin. Okay. I, I have a few questions before we move forward, please. Um, when was this document provided to uh, Bruce? Um, I can tell you right now. It was given, um, I got a letter from Mr. Seifert. Seifert. Ask yet? Yeah. Oh, it's right here. Uh, like uh, middle August, August fifteenth. That's what we were just discussing. I think we saw it at council table in August yeah. from the subcommittee. And we're just seeing it here today. I actually did. I know I mentioned this to you before. I gave you a copy of it immediately. I know, but it wasn't presented to the board. No, it, it wasn't at the time. Right. Was there a reason for that? Um, I just didn't feel it was going to be a any issue we could discuss at the time because there's really nowhere we were going to go with it election coming on and i know everybody felt the the pressures from that and you know so i'd ask who drafted the amendment the amendment was drawn by the i would have to say that maybe the village attorney i did yeah i, I accept complete responsibility <laughs> well it okay. did go it did so this go is just your your version no it's not my version it's a document i prepared based on uh, the uh, conclusion and decisions of the subcommittee on behalf of the village. And then Mike okay, Siebert. so this was not reviewed by the township attorney at yeah, all then? It was sent directly to Mr. Siebert by me on August the 15th. And then Mr. Siebert ended up forwarding it to me. At, um, I want to say that would have been maybe by August 15th. So um, Siebert didn't make any adjustments to this. This has just come from the Rome, village of Romeo? I don't know what you have in front of you. I can just tell you I prepared a draft of an agreement and I sent it to Mr. Siebert uh, on behalf of the village uh, based on uh, the uh, decisions made by the subcommittee. If you have what I sent to Mr. Siebert, then uh, unless he's made adjustments to it, uh, yeah, I, I, wouldn't know that. I don't know what I have, Mr. Clark. I have an amendment. Third amendment doesn't say who drafted it and who reviewed it. Yes, the email from Siebert, maybe it says. Well, it's part of the, it was seven. part of the email, is what I'm saying. The email that I did receive was on August 15th, and the Third Amendment, which is drawn up by Mr. Clark, which has no, um, there has been no modifications or any amend or anything done by Bob Siebert. He sent it to me for review and for discussion, and um, that's where it, that was where it was left off. Okay, so can I assume that there's been no discussions with the village regarding this Absolutely. between anyone from Bruce and? Absolutely none. Okay. Uh, there, there was a little bit. I think Mr. Parker had, re had reached out to me and asked me what was the, st the status on, uh, on the sewer, and I think I told him at the time that the $1.2 million was kind of a lot of money for us um, with what was going on. We hadn't, I hadn't, we haven't discussed it. And we were going to, you might remember my conversation better than, than I do, but it was something along that line that we don't, I don't have anything to offer you guys right now. When was your f original request for them to look at our additional capacity? So I requested at, uh, I think it was the May meeting of 2021 for an additional 495,000 gallons of capacity, give or take 490. And we have not heard. Basically, we, the only thing we 
kind of did hear back from the village of Romeo was like, no, you guys are not going to get kind of any more capacity. Then it seemed like we were starting to get a little bit of cooperation. And I says, can we currently maybe look at getting 100,000 gallons since we can't make a commitment on the 480 or 90? Because you guys have a lot of moving parts you're dealing with right now, too, as far as what capacities you may be at. So that's when I asked for the additional 100,000. And this is the proposal they came up with on 100,000. So, so I guess my comment would be if, if we do decide to move forward this, that there be a more sense of expediency than what's been demonstrated thus far. Just a request. Yes, I hear you. And I have the same concerns regarding the 1.2 million that's already been discussed, so I'm not going to beat the dead horse. I do have a concern with the maintenance costs. The maintenance costs are, are derived based on our total capacity, not on our usage. We're using less than half. Seems a little bit extraordinary. And then I guess I would ask if you would consider, uh, there's a paragraph three, talks about expansion of the facility that may be required to meet our full request of 485,000. I'd ask that they look, look, maybe look at some cost sharing of that study because the village of Romeo would have a very large customer in the event that we would contract for that. Ask if you would consider maybe cost sharing for that study. Is, is one of the uh, considerations for moving forward. Not looking for an answer, but at least some consideration for that. Throw it all out there. This is, can all be. Yeah, I, I'm just disappointed that it took that many months to respond to 20% of our request. So, just disappointed. So, I, I, I'm not trying to defend the, I'm, I guess I am in a way. The 100,000 gallons was a request that I had made. I don't even. I don't, it was never presented at the board, but I think I did that in an email to the uh, village president at the time, and I could track that date down. So maybe the request for 100,000 gallons has not been a year and a half or, or so, but maybe it's just been six months. My understanding since May is that we've needed 485,000 additional May gallons. May of 2021. May of 21. So. Okay. So why don't we see if we can put together a couple members of our board and maybe we can meet with you guys you know possibly in the near future get your feet wet a little bit and we can oh, bring this on monday let everybody know and see where the council wants to move with that absolutely and remind them of the urgency yeah i mean we have to look at it and we got to be able to make it affordable as we can for our residents and i mean I mean, I don't know what the village of Romeo would do if we decided that we're going to go somewhere else. And we have options that we are looking at. And, you know, you guys are going to, I just want to say, don't make it so lucrative for us to look somewhere else that we have to, you know. And it's unfortunate that may be a possibility. We do want to work with you guys. But if all of a sudden we, we leave, what are you guys going to do with your plant, with your, you maxed out where you are right now, you know. So, um, yeah, just yeah. something there might be some tough choices that we each have to make in the future, and I absolutely respect that. Well, yeah, we got, we got to answer to our residents is what I'm trying to say, so. Yeah. You know, so. We will okay. do the best that we can. You know, like I said, if, if we can work with you, I absolutely would love to, as long as it is respect, you know, benefits both of us, and, absolutely. you know, see where we can go with that. Really appreciate you taking your time out of your schedule to come and see us. Mr. Clark, thank you very much for coming in again tonight. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be a Bruce Township resident. Yeah. Thank you. So are we. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's move on to. Uh, I would, they, we might lose a few more people, Mike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. That's all we brought forward. Um. There's nobody here for the Kipper SLU that came in. I don't think so. So. We'll move on to item. Uh, 7D to text my gov proposal. Um, Frank, did you want to talk about it? Yeah, so this company um, <clears throat> reached out to me. It's text my gov. I think Romeo already uses it as well. And um, I signed up with the city of Romeo, but I never, I, I mean, I'm not putting anybody down or anything. But it's, I don't ever get any notices from that thing. I think I might have gotten a couple. And what they do is they, they program the software to um, put in answers to the most common questions. And as you, if you type that in there, it answers you or it, tell, it directs you who to call or what to do. 
Um, I don't know, after I thought it was a great idea at first when I seen that Romeo was doing it, and but then when I, you know, looked at the price and everything, it's, I don't know, I think you can do just as much on Facebook yeah. you know, with what we're doing. I mean, I, you know, our, our Facebook page has grown pretty tremendously as far as likes and followers and stuff, so uh, they were supposed to be actually be here to put in a presentation, but so I agree the first year we'll be paying five hundred and sixty two dollars and fifty cents additionally a month with all of our other services and then every year thereafter it's three hundred and seventy five dollars a month with a five percent annual increase every year which can bring it up another twenty almost another twenty dollars a month. The thing that concerned me is the additional storage. Um, we only start out with 10 gigabytes, and then every 100 gigabytes of storage that we're going to need is an additional $250, and then the additional text messages we get 25000 to start with, but it's $300 for the additional 25000 or 550 for 50 and 750 for 100,000 text messages. And we have to do it as, a, a, I guess, emergency alert, and we put out 6,000 emails at a time. We're going to be burning up some heavy costs here. Yeah. It just seems to be... Re W way out of our price range and I don't know about that Nixel isn't that Nixel a way that a lot of people communicate the same way is it Nixel I don't, I don't I've know. only heard that term used at Parks and Rec yeah. I've never that was new to me when I heard it there so well, I'm Washington a, Township used it as well didn't they I don't I don't yeah I think we ought to look at I think more. I heard Frank said that this seems redundant to what we're already doing yeah yeah, it, yeah I'd, I'd believe it is yeah. and there's a, a high cost to it Okay, so I think that at this time we're not voting on anything, right? Yeah. No, no. I think, I think, I think we do a pretty good job communicating with the community. Um, then we put everything on Facebook. Um, we send a newsletter out three times a year. So we have a knock on doors, right, Chief? <laughs> yeah. We do. Yeah, so. What you'll find is the public wants to be communicated when it com affects them directly. Correct. So if we do effective job, like, like like you guys reacted very, very well to the water situation we have. Yeah, we, we jumped right on there. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, the fire department had a lot to do with it. Still, if you see outside, there's three pallets of water sitting on the trail. <laughs> Waiting for the next break. Don't freeze. <laughs> no. Why would you use some of that? Well, the water was, uh, the water is kind of given from the county for the residents. And I mean, I, I mean. <coughs> did, Sorry, we do have actual water that's in that's going to cost. You could keep a cache here for you know, events as long as it's given out to the people, and the residents. As long as we keep open it. houses. Well, yeah. yeah, as long as we keep it governmentally. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so if we're going to get a storage. Or yeah, we're going to do something in the near future and distribute the rest of the water that we currently have. So. Okay. Good. All right. Thank. Thanks for bringing yep. that up, Frank. Okay. All right, we'll move on to ordinance. Uh, our item 7E. Um, I don't know, we did handle 7F, seven, seven ordinance code book. Yep. So I, I did, this was something that was brought up in 2020. Um, it would never made the board to, for board approval. Um, and it was basically Joe Tangary from Giffels and Webster, our township planner, put all of our ordinances on, uh, on, a, on our, what, our, what do you call it? Is it our website? So, yeah, it's our website. Yeah. Uh, and, and a book, and it's available to put on our website so anybody can access any ordinance that they want if they wanted to go on our website. I, I didn't think they were, pretty, they were in pretty sad shape, right? They were in multiple different ordinances. Yeah. yeah. And the, they kind of put it all together, right? Right. And I didn't print it off because it's 500 and some pages. I did send the emails to everybody to take a look at them. So we just basically what we need to do, and since it's from 2020, there's been a lot of amendments to ordinances that need to be brought up to date. The word did go out to Joe and asked Joe if he would be able to update the, the ordinances. They were amended and, and add them to the new, um, to this new, um, I guess, website that we're going to have. And he said it, he would be able to take care of it. Um, but it, at this point in time, I would like to make a motion to go ahead and put say something before you do that yeah. I, I, um, I, I was going through it briefly I, I didn't mean to interrupt you my uh, no because you could do the motions and then I could say something sorry 
Yeah, and we can do it during discussion unless yeah, it's a sorry. part of the motion that you want to do. But no. I just want to make a motion to go ahead and have this available on our Bruce Township webpage. That's all. As it is right now. Well, and he's going to have to upgrade it. Yeah, well, he's going to upgrade it, but we need to make the motion to go ahead and approve it to head it to our, web, our website. I think sh correction should be made before it would add that to your motion. Yeah. Because there are... Or if we put it out there, we have to know that there are corrections are needed. But maybe maybe Susan's motion is better that it be corrected first. Just because first. I know there are, I, I briefly went through it. I found seven instances where it w we were referred to as Charter Township, 11 where we were called Water Town instead of uh, Bruce Township. Oh, that was made a real old cut. ordinance. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was like they copy and paste it. Yeah, you, know, you cut and paste a lot yeah. of things. So. Well, there's going to be probably more than seven, I'm sure, that, you know, but it's, it's well, while we're talking about the ordinance 179 is out of date. It has to do with possession of marijuana, <laughs> which is written pre the new laws regarding possession of marijuana in the state of Michigan. So, I mean, that's just one that stood out with me that was not current. So those corrections are, I mean, what I'm looking at is we have to have our, our the files also updated with all, all of the amendments that we've had done on our or in our ordinances. So I, I, I can change the motion to go ahead and making the corrections. If you catch, catch the corrections, it would be good to shoot those to Joe and have him make the, but there's going to be many more that we're going to find probably later on down the line, even after it's posted. You know, I just, you know, I think it's a great website where the people can go online and they can look up any ordinance they want. Well, it's you know. helpful to us too in the office. Right. Uh, so. Well, while you're proofreading it, you can, what page are you on? Yeah. <laughs> that was just like a, you know, skimming Seven. through it. And Seven. Because <laughs> this was talked about in, in October of 20, and the previous board, no, I guess it was planning, but, and it didn't go to the board then, and that's because the next month we took over, so. They asked planning in our opinion. We really didn't have any jurisdiction over that, this, but okay. we had made a recommendation to the board to go do that. So I, I think we still need to make, to get an approval from the board that let so this is reworded. I'll make a motion to go ahead and have Joe bring our um, ordinances up to date, make necessary corrections as noted, and go ahead and um, I'll put on the Bruce Township webpage. Second. Anybody, Susan? Anybody else have any <laughs> questions about it at all? Matt, can we get a roll call, please? Philbrook? Yes. Kraft? Yes. Crappy? Yes. DeGiorgio? Yes. Trimbley? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, moving on to item 7G, the deficit elimination plan. Um, I can talk about it, I guess. It's just. Since we do have a sewer deficit and we do have a water deficit that the state of Michigan does require that we have a plan, something in writing or something in paper that has a way which we've calculated and determined of um, having that debt paid off, which that's basically what you see in front of you. It's got the years from 2022 to 2027. It does show um, anything that's in the red does go to the black over a period of a few years. So. Um, we just need to, um, I don't know, do we, I guess do we have to approve it, right? I'll make a motion to approve and submit the deficit and elimination plan to the state as presented. I want to thank Rhonda for helping out on that too, you know, so. Second. And that basically a lot of these numbers came out of our, um, our audit, you know, so. Second by Frank, if there's no other discussion, can we get a roll call? Oh, there is discussion. Oh, go ahead. Uh, sewer fund. There's a line item under expenditures general administrative of $60,000 starting in 2024. Do we know what that's for? Where is it? Where is it's it? under general and administrative on the sewer fund revenue and expenditures protections, the uh, mm -hmm. third line item under expenditures starting in 2024. It, it, it was not there. It wasn't in prior years. I just wondered what that was for. I, I still don't know what line you're looking at. I'm looking at, you're talking the first page. Right? First page, sewer fund revenue and expenditure projection. 
Under expenditures. Revenue. Under expenditures. Right. Down. The third line down, general and administrative, administrative yep. yeah. starting in 2024. I don't know what that's for. Well, it's an even number all the way across the board. Yeah. Um, well, there was some kind of an assumption made on that, but I don't know what it's based on. So I think that the cost of the sewerage disposal is two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and I can't remember if that's the administration, the the twenty four point five percent that we have to pay, or is that figured in the two hundred fifty thousand? But so if you look at right prior years, that doesn't exist. That's the only reason it popped out to me. Well, that's one of these things that are being corrected and something that we need to, you know, put it. It's an expenditure, and it may be because of some of the other things. I'm not really sure how Ron actually calculated out, but it was done through our auditing service. But we have a 20, we have our fee that we pay sewer to the village of Romeo, and then there's a 24.9% maintenance cost. And sometimes that's balanced out. Like sometimes we end up paying more than we get a credit from the village of Romeo. Then there's times when we have to pay the additional cost. I know if Dana was here, she could explain a little bit more. But I'm, I, I'll find that answer out for you, Mike. Um, I'm sure there's a, a logical explanation for it. And, and then I recall when we had someone do a study of our sewer and, and water fund that there was a discussion that there's no allowance for capital improvement fund. In other words, handled like stuff like lift stations or any, anything that gets old that we have a capital improvement fund available to, to pay for those things. Yeah, that's it doesn't the, appear that's that's in here either. That's the ready to serve fee on the sewer. That's what that funding would go for. That's what that ready to serve fee would be. Now we're looking at it as a maintenance fee. It's not so, broken out anywhere here. So is it that being in revenue? Oh, it's not under um, under the because because my question was under expenditures for operation and maintenance this year's. Uh, uh, was at 38,819 and starting next year it goes up to consistently $60,000 across the board through 2027 so I didn't know if it was part of that see there again that's what we're talking about where I don't think I've, all the verbiage is not on the same page some of this might mean like Mike just said well it's probably buried start. it's probably buried in that rate yes, revenue right correct Yep. But we really should have something broken out a, that establishes yeah, a, a capital improvement fund. Yeah. I'm, but That's good. I'm assuming it's it starts adding up there because our expenses kind yeah. of go, you know, the, the loan gets paid off is what I'm guessing. Yeah. And I do like it that it gets us to a net position. And my question is, what is the ideal net position? Maybe. What net position is ideal for? For it's a sewer for it's, the there is a percentage water in the formula and I don't, I don't have that answer because once you hit that then you can start looking at a potential rate reduction perhaps right but without that answer you don't know mm -hmm. and yeah. that's in the future perhaps but you know we got to figure we get I guess we need to find out what it what does it cost to replace a broken sewer line right I'm sure it's astronomical. Mm -hmm. I don't know, isn't it like $1,000 a foot when they install it? I think it depends on what the That's the whole is. need for the capital improvement yeah. fund, so you have that. Right. You have that money available in case you have that. Could capital. be anything. I mean, the uh, sinkhole could be a, lift, uh, a, a storm sewer manhole that's sinking in the ground that needs to be repaired. You know, it could be just upgrade maintenance for crippling infrastructure. We had an asset management plan done to show some of our sewer pipes in Hillside have got infiltration in them, so it's just a matter of... You know, it could be for anything, but lift station pumps that we've already had to replace a few on. You know, so even the rag that was stuck in the Cloverfield lift station, it cost $800 to get the rag out of the pump. I mean, right, exactly. Anything, you know, so. And then the, this is a smaller issue, but on the very last one, the special assessment fund. Is there a reason why hillside paving uh, goes out through 27 and the and timber ridge just is done in 22? Why is there a continuation for that for such a long time? You're, which one are you talking about? There's the very last one, the special assessment fund, uh, the, the third page. Yeah. We've got two items that go out through 2027 for paving. One is principal and one is interest. Mm -hmm. 
Is that something that the people are paying? Yes, the people pay a, that. That's the part the of the, uh, the SADs on their taxes. Okay. That's for the paving that were done on those. A different I think that's the payment notes. is the seven thousand one hundred and seventy-six dollars is what we're what the payment is made on there. And what do we do with the the net position when it gets it, over it's zero? It's dissolved. I think. It's dissolved. It goes away. And then if they need it, payment pay, paving again, then create a special assessment. And then the, the district. So if that were that. true, why do we charge in 26 and 27 when the balance gets to zero? What line it's just, are you? It was confusing to me to why does this thing have a positive net balance? I would think that when you get done with the SAD that it would net out to zero and then you would be done. This will change each year when we have to present this. So we shall have to make changes. It was just something I didn't under I didn't understand why it yeah. continued well, out. Rhonda's the expert on this and I yeah. trust her so I told heartedly, I don't know. Yeah. Probably Maybe I'll talk to her. Yep. Mm -hmm. Send her an email or call her or something. Yeah. Other than that, I'm good with it. So I think, I mean, if you look at the revenue and then the expenditures, Mike, and I mean, we still have a fund balance at the end of the physical year that still needs to be made up. I think that gets carried over from year to year, but every every year it's different, you know. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a rounded question. Yeah. And this is just a plan. Now, we we started doing this two years ago. It's done every year. Yeah, it has to be done every year. I know, she but for a while there wasn't year. being done, right? Right, and she didn't know it had to be done every year. Okay. So she just found yeah. that out. Okay. I'm good. Thank you. Well, I'll yeah. get with Rhonda. Okay. All right. Did it's more for understanding than anything else. Mm -hmm. So I think I did I make yeah. that motion. Someone made a motion and seconded second it already. Yeah. Yep. Any other made discussion? No. Oh, I did. I did. Right. You made I the had. motion. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And Frank second. Yep, I second it. If there's no other discussion, may we get a roll call, please? Kraft. Yes. DiGiorgio? Yes. Tremblay? Yes. Crafty? Yes. Philbrook? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, moving on to item 7H, the smart contract. This is pretty much housekeeping stuff that we do every year. And this is the um, credits that we get from our smart towards our um, way I can say it. It's money that goes from that we get from SMART that goes to our STAR Transportation because STAR Transportation is a subcontractor for SMART that handles our local, um, I guess, trips and it doesn't, then SMART doesn't have to do it. So basically this is our $17,490 every year. So we um, approve it every year and just um, would like to make a motion to go ahead and approve it again for the year 2023 as presented. So this is money that comes to the township and we just forward over to Star Transportation? Yeah. Right. Second. Or some, sorry, do it. I think second, second in it. Second, there's second. A, <laughs> there's no other discussion. Can we get a roll call, please? Yes. Philbrook? Yes. DiGiorgio? Yes. Kraft? Yes. Crappy? Yes. Trembling. Mm -hmm. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, moving on to item 7I, the GLWA amendment number 8 to the water service contract. Um, Susan and I met, I had a meeting with um, Great Lakes Water again, and sometimes I still don't have a great understanding of it, but there was some errors in our contract or what we had, what they had original. Um, and this basically has changes some of the exhibits A and B if you want to look at them. Um, they also showed on exhibit, I think it's exhibit A. That we did not have originally did not show her um, yeah, exhibit a shows it the previous um, contract didn't show that we had Bruce Township water customers outside of the municipal limits which we do have one at 70890 Powell Road in Armada Township which is um, um, Henshaw Electric in which they weren't aware of that until I brought it to their attention is everything okay yeah I just want to talk about the security oh. codes um, and then there was a Bruce Township master meter that was not in service that was shown on the original drawing. So that's basically, this is more of an up-to-date drawing and what we actually need to have um, 
on our contract, so um, that's what you have in front of us. So you just updated the, you, there was an agreement to update the drawings to what really exists. Right, and then also added the, there was also, we had the interconnection between the Village of Romeo, and for some reason that was not presented properly either. So we have that emergency interconnection, which we've used a few times already, um, obviously during the 96 inch, on the 120 inch water main break, we did open that up and we did shear water back and forth um, with Romeo's Great Lakes water. So that's been highlighted on there also. Yeah, it's more of an up-to-date. Susan, is there anything you want to add? Nope. Make a motion to approve the GLWA contract as presented. Amendment 8. Amendment Second. number 8. Second by Frank. Any <coughs> other questions? Not. Can we get a roll call, please? Kraft? Yes. DeGiorgio? Yes. Crappy? Yes. Trembley? Yes. Philbrook? Yes. Motion carries. I will make one comment in Great Lakes Water that there is discussion, including Bruce Township, that we only make up 1% of the Great Lakes Water's um, revenue and that we're being charged the most out of everybody. So they're trying to maybe take another look at it. Since we're only 1% of the, the gross revenue for Great Lakes Water, it's like ridiculous that we should be paying the highest amount. Um, so hopefully that's still in the works. I don't want to say anything that's may never going to happen but it's a possibility false hopes. Yeah. yeah false yeah, so okay um, moving on item 7j the um, clerk's office new hires I'm excited about this one this is uh, Mary Swicky who is the um, clerk in, in Armada she's gonna leave there and come here she's a current she clerk? is a current clerk yeah, at uh, in Armada, in Mar Armada Township. Uh, you have, well, first of all, a letter from Dana. Uh, she's retiring on the 8th of December. And then uh, this is the dis job description. And then after that is her um, resume. Is um, <coughs> she, is she mentioning who John Patternick, the uh, supervisor? I have no idea. I, I kind of kept this. What's that got to do with Yeah. I'm just curious. This is the village of Armada? No. He might Armada not be happy. We just he's, not, he's not her boss. <laughs> She's a, her own person, her own individual. Well, I mean, as in, as we just got done saying as a neighboring community, we just took their building department <laughs> official. So that's no, not. I'm just saying out of a kindness and respect. Well, I didn't think that was my place because I didn't know if she would for sure be hired, and I didn't know. I don't. You know, I don't think. I don't think it, unless we actively recruited her. But if she just responded. Yeah, I was surprised. I did not recruit her. I was surprised. So I mean, I think it's just a, a courtesy. It would be nice if he didn't get blindsided. I mean, I would appreciate a phone call from. And I don't think it would be his any of his business because he is not her boss. She is an elected rep, just like right. he is, and she has the right to go do whatever she wants. I'm not That's an elected position over there. Yeah. Pardon me? That's, that's an, elected. an elected position. Yeah, he's not her boss. I understand. That's all, I'm, that's all I'm saying. I'm not. I guess I have a different outlook on it. That's all. Just being you know, I think it. I think it would be. I, I think it would be different if she was an employee versus an elected yes. official. Because yeah. as an elected official, agree. Her her boss is the citizens of, of Armada, and then she if she makes a decision to take a position that is better for her in whatever way that is, that's her personal decision to make. I'm yeah I'm not condoning her for wanting to change positions and wanting to come over here. I just I think it just is a you know. So okay. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to approve Mary Swicky to the full time position of accounting assistant election administrator. As presented, beginning on November 28th, 2022. What is it? November 28th. November 28th. Yeah. Oh, that's like next. Is that a Monday? It is. Okay. Yes. In, I mean, may I just ask why we just got this today? To, I'm just asking. Uh, because I didn't want to put it in the packet because it's her personal information. So uh, I didn't think it should go out on, on the website. I concur. I mean, we we approved for you to post it. Yeah. And that's all we're required to yeah. do, right? right? I mean, because the hiring is your responsibility because she's yeah. going to be working for you. <coughs> do 
We need someone to send. I may use it as an example, but when we were hiring a building a building um, coordinator, it seemed like everybody had a piece of the action for some reason. It didn't seem like it went over so easy. But now it's a different department. You know, I'm just asking. That's not the case. I mean, oh my God, the hiring of the building coordinator we had went back and forth for months and months on end. I mean, I'm sorry to say it, but it really did. The building, the building coordinator? coordinator, Christina. Dana Buchanan. Oh, she's planning and zoning. Planning coordinator. Planning and zoning, I'm sorry. Oh, well, that's kind of because you guys kept dropping the ball, and I had to pick it up and, and do the job description and well, everything. Regardless, that was an in internal hire, and wasn't it a transition from... Um, but everybody's seen the application. Totally it wasn't that last minute. And that was posted on a website. I mean, the personal information. I'm just saying it should be... I don't know why we're getting this at the last minute. I would like to, you know, just spend all I had an opportunity to review. I mean, it is something that's... A big part of the township's everyday operations. I think it just should be more. But it's my department. Right. Wait, do we have a second? I'll second. <coughs> we get a roll call. There's no other discussion, please. Kraft? Yes. Kathy? Yes. Giorgio? Yes. Trembley? Yes. Philbrook? Yes. Motion carries. All right, moving on to item uh, um, 7. 7M, Fire Department Ambulance Purchase Update. Chief, that's just all you. Sure. Well, <clears throat> did you guys see the letter that I wrote to Aaron from, from Kodiak? Because I, I don't have it in my packet, but what I've been doing is just trying to check status. Because of the, the loan we took out, we, we were able to get three of our four vehicles in a, in a fairly timely manner. That's okay, as long as, long as you guys had read it. <clears throat> so we got our utility, our F-150. We, we just recently got our remount back. We, we sent it down there in June of 2021, and we just got it back at the end of October, so it's just about ready to go in service. So between the command vehicle, the F-150, and the remount, we have three of our four vehicles. The remount and the new ambulance with our custom footprint was supposed to be due at the same time. Well, they can't give me an answer on the new ambulance. And so I caught wind of what they're doing, and then that's what I put into the letter to Aaron, stating, so what they're doing is they're, they're, the price of raw materials has increased, their labor force is down, so what they're doing is just making basic ambulances putting them on the chassis they do receive, and they're driving around town selling them as demos for 310000 So at this point, I don't want to say they're refusing to, they're putting our custom footprint on hold. So in the letter where you see they gave us three options. <clears throat> we have first rights to purchase a basic for 307000 and uh, $307,000 for a basic ambulance. We have uh, the ability to get our deposit back, our 10% deposit back, or we can wait the 6 to 12 months for them to build, which they will build, our custom ambulance with the footprint that we have on our blueprints that we are currently using and want to use moving forward. So my stance is I, I, I don't think we need to pay the 60000 additional dollars to get a basic ambulance when we were quoted at the 2021 pricing in June for a custom at $243,000. They are, they are going to hold up to that price. It's just they're going to get to it when they can get to it, when they start getting back on their feet. Are there other people that do this work? There are, but they're all in the same boat. And are they all treating their customers that way? Exactly, yes. So you're kind of stuck? We're stuck. I, it's kind of sad. It, it, it is sad, and I, I think I explained it's, it's that. It's not honorable. It's not a good, you know, we're, we're, <clears throat> we've been 15 plus years using brawn ambulances, and I just don't think that's a really good model for brawn, but. I had a meeting with 
Chris Turner from Braun and Aaron from Kodiak. And uh, again, I express my disappointment and our need, right? Or by this time, we should have had it. And he understands and basically he just said that with the situation they're in, there's there's really nothing he can do but what he's doing to stay afloat by putting basic boxes on the road and, and getting today's pricing at 310. I mean, if they're if they're looking strictly at economics, they're not. This is going to be the priority to build this for us is going to be lowest on their priority list, right? Because they're going to make more money on everything else they right. build. That's what they're doing, correct? Right now, it, it just puts us in a precarious situation with right. with with them. There's is there anything that we can do? I even to offered to pay. Them? I offered to pay in full, the because we have the loan and that's the last one we need to pay off. I offered to pay it in full, and he said I, that won't help, and he, he didn't think that was a good idea, paying, paying for something that you don't know when or how you're going to get it. So he, he didn't. Has know. anyone reviewed our contract or the purchase order that was used to do that to see if we have any um, other avenues to force them to build this? Um, I, that's a kind of a good question. I guess I could look into that. Yeah, I maybe have Siebert take a look and see if there's other avenues that we might have. I mean, do it in a timely fashion rather Yeah, than to force them to, do, to take action because of the long delay, and then what they're doing is they're putting profit ahead of commitments. Yeah, yeah I don't know if it's profit. <laughs> well, sure it is. They're making more money on what they're doing, and they're saying yours, yours isn't, we're not going to make any money on yours, so you're, you're at the bottom Understood, of the list. but I, I, <laughs> it kind of sounds like they're yeah. trying to stay afloat. More, rather than profit, but I, I well, understand what you're saying. I yeah, get it. It's, it's an economic driver. It is. And uh, so I, I guess I'll look into that. But Now, what does this do to you if, if you have to wait another six months to a year for this vehicle? We, we can do it. You, you can, yeah, we, we you can have provide two, service to the community? We have two brand new frontline ambulances. We have our 2020, and then now we have this 2022, which is our frontline. And we do have, <clears throat> you know, our secondary ambulances, which are, are fine. It's just at this point, we should have had ambulance three brand new and starting our remount on our other 2010. Does that make sense? So what are we going to do about ambulance three? Ambulance three hasn't even been, is there one more? We ambulance three is this, this one right here. It could be up to a year. And so on a remount, a 2010 remount, just like we got our remount back, Mike, it's, uh, if you look on that sheet, it's <clears throat> 449 days to get a remount done. And I think that's what we should look at seriously starting tomorrow. I agree, 100%. And you can use that vehicle, you know, until they're ready to, to get started on the mount. Yeah. And, I, and I have a quote for the remount. Our remount was 176. Uh, it's a twin of our remount, but the new price is 222. That goes. That's through uh, Kodiak, right? Yeah. That's not through. The bronze, the new one. So our our, our remount that we just got back was 176,000. Right. Today's pricing is 222,000. And then new purchase obviously is 310 plus. So. I know that I think, there was. Yeah. I think starting tomorrow, we should certainly look into moving forward with the remount, and I'll look into what we need to do about uh, if there is such a thing as building it in a timely fashion. So, Chief, the, the things you have out here in the future, the 2022 second 2010 remount, is that what you were currently talking about? This is what I'm talking about, yep. This would be our fourth new. Is that one ordered, or no, is that that's just? No, what I think we should start seriously. So the forecast is, if we order it, it's 449 days. Is the prediction correct? So we have up to 365 on our new one, new new, and 449 on our. And, and under normal conditions before the chip shortage, what was the ex expectation <laughs> on the remount? Six months. Okay. I think, yeah. So you know, this is just just something that no one's ever really experienced. Before. So let let me ask you this question. This is a different question. The, the 2022-2012 Ford F350. That's not at risk of of delays, right? The red 
first red line item under the forecast. Uh, what would you say, Mike, the 2012? The 12 Ford F-350 grass. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> that's a, that's a, you know, that's our plow truck. It's our grass truck. It's got 17,000 miles on it. It's serviced. There's, there's, there's no real need for replacing it. Oh, there's no, okay. You know. So are any of these things... And then the 2013 and 2014 is where we're going with uh, 365 and the remount. That takes care of the, the 2013 Chevy and 2014 replacement. So, but if, if, so if they're in the 200, 2023 budget year, but there's a lead time, what's the lead time on those two? Is it similar? 450 days? Right. So if we started tomorrow, it would be 15 months, which would probably get us right into... End 2024. 20, right, right to start at 2024. So we might want to look at, I'm just thinking moving some of these up. Mm -hmm. Given the lead time, right? Otherwise, you're going to be short vehicles again. I don't even know if there's a guarantee on those dates. You know, uh, they're, pretty, they're pretty, well, obviously they said less than 12 months on the new ambulance. He did tell me it would be less than a year. <clears throat> And then on a remount, they said it would be 449 days or less, so 15 months or less. And we can use that truck, which it is in service as a second-line ambulance up until the day they need it for remount. <clears throat> and if we commit to a remount, then you will be assigned a chassis. So, when's the remount going to the, the remount we just received going to go into service? How much longer? Now we're just waiting on the state inspection. So you got to schedule an inspection, and they, they go through every cabinet, every piece of equipment. So, And I know there was a little bit of controversy when the two remounts were ordered, and there were some of the members of the fire department that weren't really happy about getting a remount. I'm sure you're re familiar with what I'm oh, saying. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Is there, maybe before we really go too far on the next remount, maybe we can have that in service, maybe give the guys a couple of shifts to get it sure. out there possibly. You know. Sure, yeah, we've been, been driving it a little bit, but... <coughs> Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you know. no, I understand. I mean, it's obviously the more affordable way to go. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So, so what, are you, what are you looking for, Chief? Nothing. I just was giving you an update, <coughs> and I, I will check on with Bob Siebert about if there is such thing as a timely fashion. Yeah, he have to look at the contract and see if there's any. I think we're the only ones people. that are in this predicament. Yeah, everybody's in the same predicament. Oh, geez. Yeah, I mean, St. Clair Shores, Roseville. I mean, I, the list goes on, Clinton. But <clears throat> I, I'll, I'll get with Bob and check on that. And, you know, have our take a look into it and see if there's anything that we can do to help out. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, Chief. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, let's so, um, move on to item uh, 7N. Uh, the Michigan Association of Firefighters contract. So this is union, our local 1133, that was uh, voted and approved to have a union um, uh, regarding our paid on call firefighters. Um, Frank and myself have met with the uh, with the union, and as a representative of the employee, I think it's been well over a year, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Something like that. For a long time, sometimes things got pretty heated up. You know. <clears throat> but in front of you, you have the basically the completed document um, that they've approved, and we've kind of given our final blessing on it. Um, so if anybody wants to discuss the contract at all, um, before we go ahead and make a motion to approve it, any questions? Uh, was this reviewed by Siebert? Um, you know that... Uh, no, it's pretty much a cut and paste from the the full time IAF. Um, IAF. I don't even think our IAF. Yeah, was that even reviewed by our attorney? No. Yeah, and to be honest with you, <laughs> attorneys get in there and they start putting all kinds of lead, the mumbo jumbo language, and it turns out to be four times the size. So we've our full time contract. This is yeah it follows which yep. has worked for us. Yeah, parallel. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> analysis done on this at all? Um, good, good question. Yeah, not really. I mean, so because it really pretty much remained the same. I think the only different uh, thing was um, 
the sergeant um, because they eliminated a training coordinator. The sergeant now gets 5% uh, of their pay as a stipend, their earnings. And the, um, the officers did get a little bump in pay, but it wasn't much, but like 3%. Yeah, wages were just yeah, slightly wages. changed. <coughs> of course, on this ch chart, the um, sergeants wanted to do a lot of the callbacks. So it's, yeah, to yeah. do a lot of the callbacks. And again, they assumed the responsibilities of the training coordinator. They a actually, they came in asking for 7%, but we settled at 5 I got the invoice today for this, uh, and it had only, it's $30 a month, so I have two questions about that. One, what if the callback person isn't working, and we're paying the $30 out of their? That's something the union is going to take care of. They're going to handle it, because we, we, Mike and I addressed that. I think it's in there. It states that <coughs> you send a bill, and yeah. the, the stewards will collect it. Right, the, the stewards will collect it. So you yeah, send the bill right to uh, Gerald, and then mm -hmm. he will, okay. his office then will uh, bill right. the member. So this is a union union money. Union yes, dues. Union yeah. dues, yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing that does state in here that every firefighter will get $200 for their um, uniforms. Clothing allowance. Yeah, clothing, clothing allowance. Yeah. Every year? Yes, mm -hmm. every year. There's an additional um, holiday. Um, is that typical for paid on call in the industry? It is. Okay. Mm -hmm. And two hundred dollars really isn't much. No. These pants are sixty-five. Yeah. Boots like are. Couple hundred. Hundred. Yeah, I'm and sure the boots. T-shirts yeah. and a jacket. Yeah. 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 And they they yeah. bring their own boots and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there were five people included in, in the invoice who I assume are the five that voted. What about the new people? Is there a reason why they aren't included? In That's a union issue. I don't know. Well, they're on probation. They, they can't. Yeah. They're on probation. they gotta, they got to get off well, probation. It refers to probation in here, but I didn't see anything about voting. Uh, uh, again, that's that's the union. They're, the union will dictate who gets to vote and who doesn't. That we have nothing to do with that. Yeah. Right. Have they voted on this yet? Yes, yes yeah. they did. And they've accepted they've it. it yeah. So it's up to us to approve. Now it's right. up to us to approve it. So Can again, I ask some the only cost that's going to be is the $200 that they'll each get for clothing allowance. Uh, there's going to be uh, a payment of $600 for a holiday dinner that they'll use for a Christmas or, or once multiple, a year. Yeah. <coughs> and the 5% uh, for the three sergeants, 5% uh, of their earnings for their stipend, and a 3% increase for the employee, the rest of it. Can you hum can you humor me and answer some questions? Sure. It's more for my understanding than it is questioning what you guys did. On six point two, it's upon completion of thirty days of employment, membership in the union or compliance with payment and representative shall be voluntary. Is that normally thirty days or ninety days? I that is um, so that 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 has to do with the right to work because uh, we're a right to work state. Again, this is a union issue. They're, they 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 collect their dues with the UAW. So within like thirty days. within thirty days, they can voluntarily be pay their dues. Before that, they don't well, have to do thirty that. days within upon completion of the thirty days of employment. Then they are required to pay the union dues if they choose. To. If they choose to, right. okay. Mm -hmm. Notice there's not a definition of employer in here, and they refer sometimes to employer and sometimes township. Thought was defined. Well, either one is the same the thing. Definition was there a definition? What were the definitions? Yeah, is. Again, definitions are usually right on uh, one one. It was entered into this uh, day, July first, twenty twenty two, between the township of Bruce, Michigan, here uh, here and after, referred to as the employer. Okay. Okay. Yep. Sorry, okay. Good. That. It does mention the township in other areas. I've seen too, but yeah, it w but they were. It wasn't always the township or employee. It was. Well, 5.1 starts off the township shall deduct. So. <clears throat> 9.1 on page 9. This has to do with the uh, strike. Yeah, st work stoppage. Yeah, I can't. How does that work for paid on call? For full time, you can in there. You've came to agreement that they can't strike or right, walk out. 
But what, what if they just didn't respond to calls? <laughs> I mean, I mean then they is, that a different, is that a different issue that you handle a different way? Yeah. yeah they don't start meeting the criteria of what's required of them. So. Is there like a minimum calls they have to meet? We try to hold it to 20%. 20 percent and if they don't then they get a warning or something yeah okay. we just, uh, over a couple two three months along with uh, missing trainings and, and not putting in training time and such there's a couple factors that can get them in trouble okay and we just have a paid on call firefighter that was that lost or is no longer here because of that reason not making sufficient yeah, not amount of making calls, calls and not making training right okay so, you know we're Required by the state, they have so much training, both EMS and fire. And, you know, 11, 11, 11, the uh, 11. definition part time or paid on call. It says means a part paid. Is, it, is that part time? Should that be part time? What's part paid mean? Or is that just a typo? 11, 11. Part yeah, page on 10. <coughs> They're probably doing paid on call and part time and mixed them. Yeah. Should that really be part time? I guess it depends how you want to interpret it. it should, yeah, I mean, what they're saying is part time or paid on call shall mean a part paid employee. That's In just other words, they're not paid for their time, time benefits, right. just getting a part. Oh, partially paid. Totally so same. that is the correct yeah. term. When okay. they show up, they get paid. That's based on what that state. Page 4037-1 says the effective date is July 1, 2022. Yeah, that. Uh, yeah, it's going to be retroactive from that date because that's when we pretty much got it done. And then they had a do a vote. Page 17-19-1. The uh, rank structure. I'm sorry, say that again. 19-1, the rate structure. On what page? 17. Seven. Yeah. Is it implied that the supervisor is the highest rank over the chief? Is that why it's not here? It says in our ordinance. To be fine, that you would find it even under the grievance process too. Okay. All that is, gap is broken I, down, but the ranks, there's no rank structure here. Supervisor and the fire department. Oh, okay, okay. And what is shift duty? What does that mean, shift duty? So it means that we, we operate at a minimum manning of three full-time firefighters. Um, <clears throat> they have the avail availability to work shift or shift work, shift duty. So they can take a shift. They can take a shift. And when they do that, they receive 73% of their hourly compensation. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's 24 hours. They sleep, you know, sleep in quarters. Okay. So they're like taking a full shift. Right. Okay. Well, not always. They can. They have Part the or a partial shift or whatever. 8, 12, 24. Okay. I mean, just, you know, running on minimum manning is tough. <clears throat> you know, two at one stage, one at another. You need a partner. I was confused by 20.8. on page 19 it says in the event there are no paid on call firefighter paramedics currently employed by the Bruce Township Fire Department who are interested in being hired as full-time employee by the Bruce Township Fire Department the township slash department may hire a paid on call firefighter EMT currently employed by the Bruce Township Fire Fire mm -hmm. well it says there aren't any well, we have one so how could you hire one if there aren't any so what we do is we we if there is a full-time position available, it's typically offered to a fire paid-on-call firefighter medic. But this says in the event there are no paid-on-call firefighter medics. medics. We started the EMT to medic program. It's, and it's listed in here that <clears throat> they will follow that process. It's a two-year program. You, you, know, you must be admitted into the paramedic program within six months, and you must be completed within two years. That's I know, but it, it very, it's very confusing because it says if there aren't any, and then, then, they can, then they can hire one from the paid on call, but are there aren't any. So how do you hire from zero? Aren't any, if there aren't any qualified paramedic firefighters available. It says no paid on call firefighters. Paid on firefighter. Firefighter paramedics. Oh, yeah. 
firefighter. They still don't have the, the, the degree. Then you, go after, then you start an EMT program. So we currently we do not have a firefighter paramedic on paid on call, if that helps clarify. We have all firefighter EMTs. Paid on call. Paid on call. And we currently full do. Full time is paramedic. We do have one full timer that's in the paramedic to fire or the EMT, EMT to medic. paramedic program right now, that is on full time. So you can take a paid on call if there aren't any in that program, or there aren't any fire fire paramedics. You can put one, hire one from them to go into that program. From the into the right. EMT to go through the interview process. And okay. You determine which which one of the five or six was the best candidate. <clears throat> And that's in the event of we need a full-time firefighter. Mike. How about 21.6D on page 21? How's that work for paid on call? I think this is for a new officer. I, I'm just reading it because that's the only way that would fit. This is if someone was If an officer elect is off duty, this is an elect, is off duty more than 30 continuous calendar days of probation. Right, during probation. On hold until the officer returns to duty. So this so is talking about So in other words, the they freeze his time if, for, if, towards his probation. If we lost a sergeant and hired another sergeant, if he took 30 days off from here, his probation would be extended 30 days. Okay, so this is strictly the paid on call. It works the same as full-timers. This full -timers. is just all paid on call. This has nothing to do with full-time. The full-time. <clears throat> the only insert in here is what you just talked about was the EMT to medic. Um, that's the only place you would insert paid on call into the full-time. So you don't know how the vote, the, the vote was... Uh, uh, no, nope, none of our concern. None of our concern. Yes, true. Any other questions? What was it? Yeah, 27 4G on page 28. How does that work? What, what line are you looking at, Mike? On G 20? on page 28. B? G. G. G as in George. The tuition sponsorship agreement. Do we do that today? Mm -hmm. So it says if we don't provide them one and we give them money, then they don't have any obligation to pay it back. So how I can relate this is um, Nathan Raz, we sponsored them in the Fire Academy. It's $3,400 if you're not in this program where we're part of the Macomb Community College <clears throat> um, group. So I think what this is stating, and I, I wasn't involved in negotiations, but we provided him the sponsorship and it cost him $1,900, $1,932 versus $3,300. So when we sponsor someone, we don't pay the whole thing? We don't pay it. We just allow them, I think this is what it says, is for providing a tuition sponsorship agreement. It says that they're under no obligation to repay any funds provided. So I'm assuming that we're providing. If drops out after we reimburse them, then we're not responsible for collecting it back. It doesn't, th th this doesn't say anything about dropping out of a course. It says we're responsible for providing a tuition sponsorship agreement prior to providing funds for the course funding of course if no tuition sponsorship is provided to the employee the employee is under no obligation to pay any funds provided it's I just I just don't understand how that works confusing. if no tuition sponsorship agreement is provided so see to me the way I interpret that is if we sponsor someone they're making some kind of commitment to work for us for right. so many They'll have a year or two commitment. years so that we get a return on our investment well, but no the way this reads is that if we don't do the You're agreement, the just give them the, the money, class. they don't pay it back. So <clears throat> that's, that's, that's a risk that's on us. If you don't come, you, you don't reach an agreement with them. You gotta have an agreement with them. You can say, go to school, pay for it, and then we'll reimburse you. But don't we have a written agreement that says that they sign? 
do we have a written agreement that they signed that says yes you're sponsoring me and I will give you two years after I graduate or something like that no we don't have a retainer so what does this mean I don't know what this means though see we're not paying anyone's tuition like you said return on investment What's a tuition sponsorship agreement? Though? So instead of $3,300 for the academy, it was only $1,900 because he was...